This is a physics project on the science behind Tesla coils. What Tesla coils are, are they were this concept created by a man known as Nikola Tesla way back in the day, who is often considered as a bit eccentric, especially now in hindsight. However, he did create many great contraptions and is was considered to be very underrated, although in recent times he is gaining more and more recognition for the things that he did. And perhaps the biggest thing that he did was his contribution of the theory of alternating current. He was often in heated discussion with Nick Thomas Edison about the direct current versus the alternating current. And in the end, Nikola Tesla won with his alternating current because that is what your current houses use. In fact, he is, as I said before, a very almost madman, but he still was a brilliant uh, genius for his time. Now, that's a bit of a confusing start for a confusing science. Basically, Tesla coils are insanely complex devices that use the features of many components and all this almost theoretical physics to amplify input currents to an insane amount. To get you an idea of how much voltages are increased, your household current is 120 volts and it takes 1000 volts for electricity to go across one inch. And when you see those Tesla coils that shoot out almost lightning or massive amounts of electricity, which are the same thing, then that's thousands and thousands of volts going over through the air. And it's what, to be more precise, it's 1000 volts per inch that the electricity arcs through. Now, a lot of these features, as I just said, can get a bit complex. So let's start out with the first thing you need to do. Let's start out with a transformer, which is the very first step in the Tesla coil. And basically what that does is it takes the input current and amplifies the voltage to be output. And while some of the amperage is lost, the voltage can be insanely increased uh, given the ratios. This happens because electrons have a magnetic field about them, especially when moving. And so what happens in a wire is that it creates this giant moving magnetic field that pulls on other electrons. So the input current goes through windings of wire that pulls on a completely separate set of wire that is also coiled. It, it basically functions like a merry-go-round behind the physics aspect. When you consider yourself as the first set of windings, and what you basically do is that when you get pumped full of electricity that's coursing through you, your arms are like the magnetic, magnetic field. When you're pushing on the merry-go-round, your arms are the magnetic field. That's the result of the current pulsing through you. And as you pull and push on the merry-go-round, you're pulling and pushing on the electrons of the other wire that has many, many more coils of winding. And basically, the more coils of winding it is, the more it works because the bigger the merry-go-round, as you get the merry-go-round up to your top speed, the harder it is for it to stop because you can get the merry-go-round up to a very great speed, but the bigger it is, the more mass it has. And so this means a slower acceleration, but once it gets up to its top speed and stops accelerating, it becomes more difficult to stop merely because of its gigantic size. And similar goes for the coils of winding in the output of a transformer. As the electricity gains momentum from being pulled and pushed by the smaller coil of uh, wire, it gains more and more momentum. And it does have slower acceleration because it's moving more electrons, but it's almost insignificant uh, amount of time because of how fast electricity moves. So that's basically how a transformer works. Next, the current goes into the amplified current goes into a capacitor. And what a capacitor does is a very almost more complicated process that is almost seems theoretical in some aspects. But it, instead of using the magnetic poles and whatnot, it focuses more on static electricity. And this also focus deals with magnetic fields of electrons, but in a more charged kind of way. And it somehow manages to store, temporarily store electricity. And what it is, is when electrons gather onto, instead of coils of winding, it's two separate plates. And when electrons begin to gather on a plate, it gains a negative charge, which forces a positive charge on the other plate. And they almost pull each other, 
pull together to hold a temporary charge. And because the electrons are not moving, the pro the positive charges aren't moving. And so they're holding each other still. And so it temporarily holds a charge. Their fields aren't strong enough to hold indefinitely. So it eventually discharges. But the key is, is that it just needs to hold the charge long enough until it can start building up current and magnifying itself. And so, so far we have the initial current going into a transformer to get a decent amount of voltage. Not nearly as much as the intended output, which will create all lightning spectacles, but enough for now. And then this goes into a capacitor where it stores it and discharges it in timed intervals as the current circles around. And this cycles around itself. But from the capacitor, it goes into a primary coil, which is at the bottom of the Tesla coil. It wraps around, and it doesn't actually touch the coils or winding you see on the tower. It's just on the base, and it wraps around, and it's generally a thicker cord and not as tightly wound. And here we go back into the magnetic field aspect of moving electrons. And what this does is it creates this massive field that as the charge flows through it, it pushes out this giant magnetic field in all directions. And then as the voltage goes away, it moves on it past the primary coil. It, the field disappears because the, voltage, the current has disappeared. So the field immediately decays and collapses in on itself. In the meantime, while this field is expanding, it pushes all the electrons in the secondary set of coils, which is the actual wire that you see going up the tower and into the metal object at the top of the Tesla coil. And it forces all of the electrons into the top, and which somehow manages to store these electrons. So what happens then is that as the field decays, it resets the electrons in the coil, and the electrons begin to move up and down as the field grows and decays. And this is where resonance comes in, which is the entire point of making a Tesla coil in, uh, from a theoretical standpoint. And so this is resonant. And what that means is that as the field, as I just said, increases and decays, the electrons in the coil going up the tower begin to move and up and down in sync uh, with the growth and decay of the magnetic field. And that can get very strong and powerful because it's compounding itself with each time the field grows and decays. And each time the capacitor kind of discharges more electricity. Now there's another component that's involved in the circuit for the Tesla coil down in the box underneath it. And that is a spark gap. And what that is, is it's a gap between two pieces of wire or metal sphere or whatever, that where one is going to the capacitor and one is coming from the primary coil. And what it does is it uses air as a resistor so that the current is going through the transformer, the capacitor, through the primary coil, and then back to the transformer and repeats the process over and over until it gains enough voltage from being stored at the capacitor, from resonating in the primary coil, and from just repeatedly going through the transformer until it can cross the spark gap, which is about an inch wide, or it varies, I should say. And it, once the current is strong enough to pass over the spark gap, that is when it is able to bypass the transformer and go straight full circle through the capacitor and primary coil. And the electric current, again, skips the transformer by taking the spark gap because that becomes, it's closer, so it's a path of, it's the closest path it can take. And it just cycles this rapidly while it has that current that's strong enough to cross over the spike gap. And this speeds up the process significantly and keeps the current constant so that you get a constant resonance with the primary coil and the secondary coil, which is the coil that goes up the tower. And with this rapid surge of power and this consistent resonance that is when all the power is able to be magnified in the secondary coil and thrown up into the sphere or metal plating at the top of the co tesla coil 
and then it can be discharged into the air. And that is basic, the basic science behind a Tesla coil. And hopefully we all learned something new. I know I did. And this was a very interesting topic for me. And I learned many new things. And in fact, I was disproved of some of my previous understandings of how a Tesla coil worked. That wraps us up for this video. Please enjoy and use what you learned.